Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Explanation. So in today's video, I'll be covering topic 10.5 that is engineering professional practice from Nepal Engineering Council exam and I'll try to cover each and every topic. So this can be, I think this syllabus is part of every engineering syllabus. So uh, I am trying to covering the syllabus from Communal Engineering. Okay, so the first topic is environment and society. So let's solve the question under this. First question is which of the following as an example of renewable energy source. So renewable energy source um, we have already studied uh, in our junior classes. So renewable and non-renewable. So natural gas, coal, solar power and nuclear power. So solar power is the example of renewable energy source. Let's go to second question. What does the term carbon footprint refer to? Carbon footprint. So it is the amount of carbon dioxide released during volcanic eruption. No. Footprint means that has been covered by, that has been em emised of like, uh, that has been produced by, we can say, uh, organization or people or, uh, you know, factories and all. So total emission of greenhouse you know, gases caused by individual organization or a product. Yeah, this is called carbon footprint. So B is the correct answer. Let's go to question number three. That is, what is the purpo purpose of environment impact assessment, that is EIA? Okay, so uh, environment impact assessment EIA, what it does is it is used to measure or it is used to see that what is the effect will be, uh, what, what effect will be done by a uh, project or industry or any kind of development on the environment. Okay, so to evaluate the financial feasibility, no, to access the potential environment effect, yes, it is used to measure the potential environment effect of a proposed project or development, whether the project you are trying to do. Uh, whether it affects the environment or not okay so b is the correct answer let's go to question number four so question number four is which of the following is an example of sustainable waste management okay so if you have gone through this sustainable waste management it means that whether we will be able to recycle our waste product or not okay recycling our waste product like it can be uh, from plastic from papers from glasses and all so dumping waste product in open landfill no this is not the answer in uh, in generating waste without proper air pollution control measure no implementing a recycling program for paper plastic yes so it means that how we can reuse or recycle our product waste product so it is called sustainable waste management yeah so let's go to question number five Okay, so answer is already visible for this question. What is the main purpose of green building design and construction? Okay, so the main purpose of this type of green building and construction is that in order to improve or reduce the impact of, uh, we can say, mm, the destru destructive impact of environment. Okay, so reduce the cost of material and labor. No, to increase the aesthetic of a building. No, to minimize the negative environment impact of a building throughout its life cycle. Yes. So this is the correct answer. What is the significance of Montreal Protocol? Okay. So Montreal Protocol, if you have um, learned this uh, about this uh, Montreal Protocol, so it was um, dealing with something called ozone and all. Okay. So ozone layer. So you have to remember the keywords like this. If Montreal Protocol, so it is it deals with ozone and all. So it aims to address climate change by reducing the greenhouse gas emission. It regulates the management and disposal of hazardous waste. It promotes sustainable agriculture practice or it aims to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production and use of ozone depleting substances. Yes, as I told you, Montreal Protocol, it deals with ozone effect. So D number is the correct answer for this. Okay, so le uh, next question is, what is the um, primary goal of su uh, sustainable transportation system? Okay. So again, sustainable transportation system means uh, it, it will provide some environment friendly, we can say transportation, okay, because this all is related to environment. So increase the use of private vehicle, no. To reduce traffic congestion in urban areas, no. To promote the use of non-renewable energy, no. To promote efficient, affordable, and environmentally friendly transportation options, yes, D is the correct answer. Let's go to question number eight. So what is the concept of cradle to cradle design? Okay, so cradle to cradle designs means it is reuse and recycling. Okay, it, it deals with recycling and reusing. So it focus on reducing waste generation through recycling and reusing, yes. So other no recycling reusing words to use, so A is the correct answer. Uh, let's go to question number nine, that is what does the term environmental justice refer to? 
ओके इन इन वॉमिटल जस्टिस मीन्स वॉट इट मीन्स दैट वी हैव टू द द रिसोर्सेज यू कैन से द रिसोर्सेज एंड द इन्वामेंटल सब्सटांसिस दिस वुड बी फेयरली यूज बाई एवरी वन ओके ऑल द पीपल ऑल द पॉपुलेशन यू कैन से सो द फेयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इन्वामेंटल रिसोर्स एंड बेनिफिट्स अमॉन्ग डिफरेंट पॉपुलेशन या इट इज़ अ फेयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओके so the legal systems approach to environment regulation know the protection of india's and no these are from the environmental justice fine so let's go to the next topic okay so d is the correct uh, sorry a is the correct answer the fair distribution of environment resources and benefits okay so that was all about the first topic environment and society the second topic is professional ethics so let's go to the question so question number 1 is which of the following is a fundamental principle of engineering ethics okay so engineering ethics it generally deals with integrity and honesty so i guess you have studied this um, subject in fourth year or third year i guess so maximizing profit for company no prioritizing personal interest no personal word cannot come here ensuring honesty and integrity in professional practice yes c is the correct answer Let's go to question number two. What is the primary goal of code of ethics in engineering? Okay, code of ethics. So it is nothing but it is a code of conduct. We can say the code of conduct in uh, if you are going to make any decision. So it provides a code of conduct for that. So to restrict the professional growth of engineering, no restrict word will not come here. To provide guidelines for ethical decision making and conduct, this can be the option. To encourage engineering to engage unethical behavior, no. To promote to promote conflict of interest, no. So every all the other options are negative. So B is the correct answer. Let's go to question number three. What does the principle of confidentiality mean in engineering ethics? okay so confidentiality means that you um, like if you are working anywhere so your client your employee everyone uh, there should be protection of their uh, privacy okay private information on confidentiality we can say sharing confidential information with unauthorized parties no this is a negative option disclosing sensitive you know no this is also a negative option protecting the privacy and confidentiality of client and employee information yes c is the correct answer Okay, so I think this is very easy, very easy subject. So question number four is, what is the purpose of conflict of interest policy in engineering organization? Conflict of interest. Okay, so here conflict of interest means that uh, sometimes what happens is um, our personal interest or our personal uh, decisions they it can be. um conflicted with the professional you can you know professional judgment and all so uh, that type of information means conflict of interest to encourage engineering to prioritize personal interest over no to provide guidelines for exploiting personal no to prevent situation where personal interest may compromise professional judgment and integrity yes c is the correct answer okay so let's go to question number 5 Okay, so question number five is what is the role of whistle blowing in engineering? Okay, so whistle blowing in engineering means that if there is any unethical behavior that can be a um, threat to public, so that is called whistle blowing in engineering ethics. So encouraging unethical behavior within an organization, no. Protecting engineers who engage in unethical practices, no. Reporting unethical behavior. Okay, let me show you the options. So, yeah. reporting unethical behavior or practices that pose a threat to public and safety yeah c is the correct answer let's go to question number 6 what does the term confidentiality refer in context of engineering ethic so the obligation of disclosed property information to unauthorized no the duty to respect the privacy and confidentiality of a client yeah so i think this question has been repeated so b is the correct answer let's go to question number 7 what is the importance of ethical decision making in engineering ethical decision making so it allows engineer to prioritize personal gain no it helps to maintain public trust and confidence in engineering profession yeah this can be the option to encourage the engineering to disregard safety no it promote unfair competition no b is the correct answer let's go to question number 8 what is the primary goal of professional accountability in engineering okay professional accountability so professional accountability is um, uh if uh, if we are doing any work any professional 
decision we are taking or any work we are doing so we should be responsible for that accountability means that okay so to avoid taking responsibility for engineering failures or mistakes no we have to be responsible to promote a cultural of culture of blame within no we cannot blame any other person to ensure that engineers are held responsible for their professional acts and decisions yes she is the correct answer okay so next next question is what is the responsibility of engineers towards the environment in terms of ethics so the options are to prioritize economic growth and development no to disregard, disregard environment regulation and standards no to promote a sustainable practice yeah sustainable practice in minimizing the negative impact of engineering activity on environment this is the correct answer okay so that's all for the two topics from this 10.5 and in next video i'll try to cover the other two or three topics so please study nicely and stay safe thank you